and this is Barbara serving as your host today. Our title today is the third day resurrection. Was it the 16th of the Feast of First Fruits? Well, here's some scripture facts. Number one, Yeshua died on the evening of the Passover. That's from John 18, 28, 19, 14. Yeshua died around the ninth hour of the Passover day, and that would be 3 p.m. in modern day time. I'll just leave all these verses for you to look up. Uh, and number three, Yeshua died on an evening before the Sabbath, or as it was drawing towards the Sabbath. And four, Yeshua rose after the Sabbath at dawn on the first day. Saturday Sabbatarians are adamant about the three-day, three nights as a sign of Jonah because their entire justification of consecutive Saturday Sabbath hangs on it. Saturday Sabbatarians attempt to place Yeshua's death as a 72-hour period because they are believing in a Wednesday crucifixion and they are forced to interpret the sign of Jonah and that passage would be 72 hours, Matthew 12, 40, quite literally. So what do Sabbatarians uh, believe? And also Sunday keepers, too. They believe that Wednesday, the 14th of the first month, was the Passover, and Yeshua dies, and he's buried before sundown. Thursday, the 15th of the first month, the first day of unleavened bread, which would be a high special Sabbath, is what they believe. Friday, the 16th of the first month, the second day of unleavened bread. And Saturday, the 17th of the first month, the third day of the unleavened bread, a fixed regular Sabbath. And Sunday, the 18th of the first month, Yeshua is resurrected. By the time the women came, that he had risen. And here's a chart below showing uh, Wednesday, and they have a bib 14 under it. Thursday, the 15th, Friday, the 16th, Saturday, the 17th, and Sunday, the 18th, with the modern days of the weeks above them. Here it is again, enlarged, um, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So because the moon is so predictable, it is possible to precisely calculate lunation thousands of years ago as well as years into the future. So Saturday Sabbatarians counting consecutive weekly Sabbaths all the way back to 31 AD have placed the crucifixion on a Gregorian Wednesday because Passover had to happen at the time of a full moon in 31 AD. So because we can uh, check the moon all the way back to the time of 31 AD, we can see that the full moon was on a Gregorian Wednesday. And uh, also over here shows again, this is a Seventh-day Adventist chart from the 70 weeks of Daniel showing uh, 31 AD. So an example of the sign of Jonah here, uh, this appears to be the only way they can retain the traditional Saturday, Sabbath, and Sunday resurrection on a Gregorian calendar, is putting the crucifixion on a Gregorian Wednesday. So 72 literal hours is three days and three nights leads to a second kind of Sabbath belief. And unfortunately, a Saturday Sabbath and a Sunday resurrection creates an additional and unbiblical weekday Sabbath and an additional first day during the Passion Week as seen here. So first fruits wave sheaf is always on the 16th, and we'll see that in Leviticus 23. And first fruits is never on the 18th. And over here we have our scripture, Leviticus 23.5. In the 14th day of the first month at even is Yah's Passover. Leviticus 23.6. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto Yah. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. 
Leviticus 23.11, And he shall wave the sheep before Yah to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. So this timeline of the crucifixion showing that one must step outside of the given and normal reading of Leviticus 23 to insert an extra day. Here is a chart from 119 Ministries, and they have a good ministry, but uh, they are also placing the crucifixion on a Gregorian calendar, which Gregorian Wednesday. So which calendar did Yeshua keep? Did he keep the calendar in the heavens or a Saturday calendar? Well, at the time of Yeshua, there was an eight-day Roman calendar, and Saturday did not exist. Breaking news. I know this is new to most of us. Uh, we thought uh, Saturday Sabbath went all the way back to creation. But the continuous weekly cycle is proven false. It doesn't go all the way back to creation. In fact, uh, the weekly cycle has been interrupted and changed many days. And the whole world didn't even adopt the Roman Gregorian calendar that we use today until some countries even as recent as 2016. So the Julian calendar began at 46, 45 B.C. And that was before Yeshua was born. Julius Caesar separated the months and weeks from the moon and made a continuous eight-day cycle. And in A.D. 321, Constantine created a compromise calendar. Uh, he blended the Hebrew idea of a seven-day week with the Julian concept of a continuous weekly cycle and added the veneration of the sun god as the first day of the week. Uh, and that's from Mithraism. And that was to create the Roman calendar that is used today. And in 1582, Pope Gregory the Thirteenth um, also uh, published this Gregorian calendar. So um, there are a lot of good teachers out there, uh, but um, they are falsely believing in a Gregorian Wednesday. Uh, this is a quote from Michael Ruth's newsletter. Following Passover is the Feast of Unleavened Bread, a seven-day feast during which nothing is eaten that contains leaven. Being seven days in length, this feast always includes a weekly Sabbath, Saturday. The day after the Sabbath, or the morrow after the Sabbath, Leviticus 23:11, we are told to bring the first fruits of the barley harvest and raise it as a wave offering. This is the day of first fruits. He offered himself up, talking about Yeshua, for our iniquity. It was a Wednesday. As the Bible states in Matthew 12, 40, he was in the ground for three days and three nights. He was raised on the Sabbath, and then, as the day of first fruits began, he raised the first fruit saints whose graves were opened at his crucifixion and presented them as a wave offering in the heavenly temple to Jehovah. And this was the fulfillment of the Feast of First Fruits. And there's the quote from it, and the emphasis is mine. Well, I bought all the Jonah codes uh, from Michael Rood, and I watched them all, but I um, was just learning about the feast days, and I noticed that he said that that year that Yeshua died, that first fruits was on the 18th of the month and not the 16th. There was no Wednesday then, and there was also a uh, wave sheep was not on the 18th, Brother Michael. Because first fruits is always the 16th of the month, as we have read, and here are the scriptures again for you to read. And uh, also, 1 Corinthians 15:20 says, But now is Messiah risen from the dead and became the first fruits of them that slept. Okay, here are three questions for you. Please answer them honestly. Question one, do you believe that the Feast of First Fruits is a type and shadow of the resurrection of the Messiah? Question two, 
Do you believe that the Feast of First Fruits is a type and shadow of the third day resurrection of the Messiah? Number three, do you believe that the sheaf is to be waved on the morrow after the weekly seventh day Sabbath during the Feast of First Fruits? If you answered yes to all three questions, then there is no way that you can count the weekly seventh day Sabbath as a seventh day on a Gregorian calendar, and that would be Saturday. If you answered yes to all three questions, then you must count the Sabbath from the new moon every year, which is an impossibility on the Roman Gregorian calendar. Well, someone may ask, how is that? The suffering and the death of Messiah fulfilled the Passover, which falls on the 14th day of the first month. If you believe that the Feast of First Fruits, the 16th, is a type of the third day resurrection of Messiah, then you agree that the sheaf must be waived the third day after the Passover sacrifice of the 14th, which would be the 16th. Whatever fixed number of days one believes there are between Yeshua's death and his resurrection, they must always remain the same fixed number of days every year, which again doesn't fall on the same day on Gregorian calendar every year. Fixed dates don't change year to year on Yah's calendar. They're always the same. And planetary weekday names were non-existent in the first century. Scripturally, weekdays are numbered numerically, one through seven, or first, second, third, etc. It would serve us well to think in these terms and not in terms of Gregorian Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, etc. Uh, and this helps us to better understand what the scriptures teach and avoids the confusion that weekday planetary names bring with them. So if you believe the sheep is to be waved on the morrow after the weekly seventh day Sabbath as a type of the resurrection, then you agree the Sabbath is a fixed number of days from the Passover, the 14th, to the date of the resurrection every year, whether it be the 16th, the 17th, or the 18th. But the moment you tie a fixed number of days to an event on a Gregorian calendar, like the day after the Sabbath, which would be a Saturday Sabbath, you have an irresolvable dilemma on any calendar other than Yah's calendar. The dilemma is that the date of the weekly Saturday Sabbath change every month. The date of the resurrection would also change each year. The only way that Passover, the resurrection, and the weekly Seventh-day Sabbath can be fixed dates every year is to count them from the new moon. You cannot count the Sabbath as a seventh day on the Roman calendar and get it to come out to be a fixed number of days from Passover every year. To do so is to try to impose a modern Gregorian calendar with its planetary weekdays onto Elohim's calendar of Genesis 1, 14 through 16. The modern Gregorian calendar did not exist at that time. It is an anachronistic, out-of-place order of chronological order to think of the Passion Week in terms of the Gregorian calendar. However, on Elohim's calendar, close examination reveals the truth of the lunar solar calendar. It exposes the unscriptural, uninterrupted cycle of Saturday Sabbath as found on the solar-only Gregorian calendar. And over here on the right shows uh, April um, 2023, uh, showing uh, Passover. Uh, this one shows Passover beginning on a Wednesday, and that would be a Gregorian day. But the biblical calendar never changes. Passover is always a preparation day before the Sabbath. So whether you believe that the Messiah rose the third day, 
which would be inclusive reckoning, as the scripture states in seven verses. Or, if you believe that Yeshua rose after 72 literal hours, the sign of Jonah, is irrelevant, because you still must wave the sheep a fixed number of days from Passover. And that fixed number of days is three days. Anything other than three days will not result in a type of third day resurrection after the Sabbath of the 15th. Yeshua rose on first fruits, the 16th of the first month. So I hope this has been a blessing to you. So please like uh, if it has been a blessing to you. And please share it with others that love Yeshua. And thank you for being here today.